Welcome. This is what is happening on the sun today, the 17th of August, 2011. 41 years ago this day, Venera 7 was launched. It became the first spacecraft to transmit from the surface of another planet, Venus. The trivia question for today, therefore, is how long did it take for Venera 7 to get to Venus from Earth? I also have at the end 12 days of observations of Elnin taken by the Stereo B spacecraft, which may be of interest to some of you. In the last 24 hours, the sun has remained relatively quiet, producing just three C flares this morning. Now, Noah is carrying this as two C flares, but I think if you look at the high energy channel shown in blue, you can see that there are three distinct peaks first, an impulsive one, followed by two longer duration events. Also, keeping a weather eye on the GOES plot, I see that there's yet another C flare in progress as I produce this video. So, um, maybe the sun is picking up in its activity levels. So, let's see where that activity is coming from. We have two officially numbered regions on the disk, 1271 in the northeastern hemisphere and 1272 which was numbered today in the southeast. Let's first take a look at 1271. I think you can see that this is a fairly complex region, but if you analyze it carefully, I think you can see that there are three regions here, not just one. There's one to the north and east of the main part of the region, and there's a new one growing up to the south and east of the region. I've circled them here. Next, let's take a look at the southeast, where region 1272 has been newly numbered. You see, when you look at it in detail, it's a much simpler region with much smaller spots. Yet, it is the one that's been producing most of the activity in the last 24 hours. And now, here you can see the difference between a large, powerful region like 1271, that isn't changing very much, and a small and dynamic region like 1272, that is. It's the dynamic changing region that's likely to produce the flares. Last night, three small regions started to appear near this center in the southern hemisphere. Here we can take a look at them in more detail. You can see there are conglomeration of small spots, but we need to keep an eye on those in case they grow. Now let's take a look at the development of these regions over the last 48 hours. And in the visible light movie, I'd like you to keep an eye on the place near this center where those three regions started to appear and see how rapidly the initial growth was. However, you may need to go into full screen mode to see the details. In the magnetic movie, I'd like you to look at the structure and development of region 1271. See if you agree with me that there's more than one region there. You can also see the emergence in the south of those three regions I was talking about earlier. In the transition region movie, there's a lot going on. I counted seven eruptions in the last 24 hours. However, the interesting thing is you can see the eruption that was one of the sea flares from region 1272. But unfortunately, again, we don't have Helio Viewer to help us out to illustrate these. So I've got some still frames here to show you what to look at when the, uh, when the movie runs. Also there are two beautiful eruptions in the northeast and the uh, northwest that are worth looking at. You may want to run this part of the video through several times to see what's going on. In the low temperature coronal movie, I'd like you to again concentrate on the two active regions 1271 and 1272 and contrast and compare them. How is your assessment of the two regions different from what it was yesterday? And could you have told from what you said yesterday that 1272 was going to be the more active of the two regions? If so, you have developed a potential flare forecasting tool. But test it out on a few other regions first before you claim victory. From the SOHO chronograph data, you can see how busy it has been as far as coronal mass ejections are concerned. There is an absolute beauty of the East Slim just at the end of the sequence. But note they are all relatively slow and off the east or the northern uh, limb, so those are unlikely to be geo-effective. Next, let's take a look at the state of the solar wind from the ACE data. You can see that the temperature of the solar wind has been dropping steadily over the last 24 hours, as has the density and the velocity, so I think the effect of that coronal hole is now passing. The high energy electron flux seems to be at a relatively modest level, and because we have no large impulsive flares, the proton monitor is at background levels. The image of the auroral zone from the GOES-15 spacecraft shows that uh, it is not particularly active at the moment, and the KP index has been varying between 1 and 3. So in summary then, the X-ray background has risen to the B3 level, the sunspot number has increased to 26, radio sun intensity has remained constant at 90 solar flux units, solar wind speed has dropped a little to 420 km per second, with a density of two protons per cubic centimeter, and geospace conditions are rated as quiet. So my forecast for the next 24 hours is that there's a good chance of getting sea flares, 
M flares are just possible, but I think it's very unlikely we're going to get an X flare. The sunspot number should go yet higher. We've got a good chance of continuing to get coronal mass ejections. The solar wind speed should go lower, but there's a very poor chance of us getting a geomagnetic storm in the next 24 hours. From the composite coronal image from the SDO and the two stereo spacecraft, we see that there is a region about three days behind the east limb, but it's not all that bright. However, there is a very bright region coming off about four or five days away. So we've got that to look forward to. If you want to find out more about what's happening on the Sun, follow some of the links in the description box below. If you'd like to see earlier editions of the Sun today or some of my other videos, go to my channel. They're all listed there. The answer to the trivia question is four months. Venera 7 landed on the surface of Venus on December 15th, just two days shy of four months. As promised at the beginning, I have the images of the first 12 days of observations of Elmin by the Stereo B spacecraft. Now I was going to do something which I thought might be amusing, which was to do the 12 days of Christmas song, but applied to Elmin. Something along the lines of, On the first day of Elmin, my true love gave to me a cartridge to shoot my TV. Well, there are two flaws to this plan. First of all, I couldn't work out the lyrics for some of the later days. And secondly, as you just witnessed, I can't sing. So if there are any talented lyricists out there and people with good voices, I'll put the two of you together and you see what you can come up with. It should make a very hilarious uh, YouTube video. So here are the videos from the Stereo B spacecraft. First, The first video is for the first five days, 1st of August to the 5th of August. And the second video is from the 6th of August to the 12th of August. Note how the comet is getting brighter as it gets closer to the sun. That's because it's evaporating off more of its material and getting larger. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.